Hello and welcome to Let's Fix Computers. This is the iMac hard drive replacement speed run. So, what we've got here is an iMac unibody. This is one of the early unibody ones. Um, the primary difference being notice that the glass is, doesn't go all the way to the edge. It has a metal bezel around it. Um, the procedure is fairly similar for other iMacs, including the edgeless ones. However, you'll find that it's slightly different on the inside. But if you watch this video, you should be able to work it out. So, we're going to start off with a suction cap to lift up the glass. It's literally just magnetic, so it just lifts straight up and comes off like so. Uh, the only exception to this is if you have one of the very new iMacs, the really, really thin ones, the glass for that is glued on. You will not be able to do it yourself, I would wager. Uh, it can be done, but it's a horrible job, and yeah, I haven't had to do one yet, and I don't plan on trying it. Go to Apple is my recommendation there. Um, okay, with the glass off, um, we also need to remove the uh, bottom panel that covers the RAM slots. I've already taken the one off on this one. Then after that, we've got to take out these Torx screws around the edge here. Uh, these, I think, are T12s. That feels good. T9s, sorry. So yeah, just take this lot out. And once you've taken those out, uh, we're going to lift off the top of the front case. Uh, now, to do this, I'm going to put my thumbs on this spongy material around the edge. This is on the metal part of the LCD, so be careful how hard you push, but you don't need to apply too much pressure. So just lift that up, like so, and then push it away from you and off. And then we need to disconnect the eyesight camera over here. And that's that off. Okay, this gets us to the main interior. Uh, this one is pretty clean inside because I've actually already done the hard drive on this one once already. However, the hard drive I fitted was itself faulty, so I'm having to do this again, hence why I'm rushing. Um, so expect to see yours really dirty and dusty inside. I recommend cleaning it out with some compressed air and a paintbrush while you have the opportunity to. Heat is a big killer in these things. So yeah, um, once you've done that, we need to take out the LCD. That's four screws down each side, which are again these T9s. And then, what we need to do is lift up the display and disconnect the cables underneath it. So, as I lift it up, you'll be able to see the cables connecting. So, firstly, we've got this fella here. This is a, a sensor or a temperature sensor. And that goes down to there. Uh, then, uh, before we go any further, we've also got the actual LCD cable. This comes off to a T6. And then, as we lift it up, let me just try and get you in there. We'll have these cables here. These are the backlight power cables. And there'll be another pair of those at the back as well. Disconnect those and then you can lift out the LCD. Okay, right, our next point of interest is the hard drive here. So we've got a, another temperature sensor that sits on top of the hard drive. Your one will probably be stuck, be stuck down a bit better, but as I say, this one's been removed once already. So just pull that off and pull it out of the way. And then there is a um, plastic clip that you just need to press in and up like that. It's fairly stiff, so lean on some of the uh, metal chassis if you need to. And then the hard drive will just work its way out like that. Right, you can use any standard three and a half inch serial ATA hard drive. Uh, the exception to that is certain models of the iMac have um, 
the use the hard drive's internal temperature sensor. So rather than having this thermal sensor on a fly lead, you'll have an extra wire coming to the back that usually plugs into the engineer's pins. So if you have one of those, you may need to get a matching hard drive. The alternative is to leave the thermal sensor disconnected. If you do that, you'll need to use third-party software to keep the um, main cooling fans down to speed because without that thermal sensor they'll run on panic mode. Um, if you need to, I use a bit of software called Max Fan Control, that's M-A-C-S Fan Control, and that will allow you to manually set your fan speeds. So, as you can see now, I'm just removing the screws <clears throat> on the hard drive. That's our hard drive out. I'll now put a new one in. I'm fitting a Western Digital Blue, because this is a really good all-rounder hard drive that's good for everything. Okay, that's our hard drive prepped, so let's plug that back in. Sometimes it's easier to connect it before you put it in position, and sometimes it's not. Uh, this appears to be one of the not times. Now, I'm going to take that out. Last thing I want to do is break the hard drive connector. Oh, there we go. I think I've just got it to line up. There we go. There we go. And then stick your thermal sensor back down on any bare bit of metal on the hard drive. And just make sure that those cables lie flat like so. Alright. We are ready to reassemble now, so get your LCD, balance that on the back like so, and start reconnecting the cables. These only go in one way, so just make sure they click into place. And as you're lowering the screen down, just make sure that those backlight cables sit in a cavity somewhere. So plug these ones in. And again, I'm just going to make sure that those sit down in this slot as I lower the big display. There we go. Now we'll just route this thermal sensor back into place and plug that in. and we can reconnect the display cable. FYI, if you've got a magnet like this that you can put on your screwdriver, now's a good time to get it out because you really don't want to start dropping screws at this point of the repair. Okay. Now I need to put in the main display screws again. And now the bezel. So we start by reconnecting the EyeSight camera. No, oh, had it right the first time. There we go. Now, hook the bottom end over first and pull it back towards you. And then as you're lowering it down, just make sure that this cable falls back into the gap and doesn't get trapped at all. There we go. And now we're back onto the T9s again. Okay, now, just do your best to wipe the dust off of the LCD. Use a soft cloth if you need to. 
and then just lower that glass back down. Like that. No it is. Uh, oh yeah, one more item of business. I've got to put the round cover back on. I think this does have a correct way around. No, this one doesn't. I just feel like they do. And there it is. One fixed iMac. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.